Good evening. Good evening. My name is Doris Kovic, and tonight we have as our keynote speaker is Catherine Ronald Bagels. She is from Chicago, Illinois, and married to her wonderful husband, Bill. She was born in Washington, D.C., and has lived in New Jersey, Michigan, and Philadelphia. Catherine, though she is retired, is an experienced broadcast journalist, radio news host, and producer. She is also a television news writer, Emmy award-winning public affairs producer, a website political writer, and elected union volunteer. She is a formal elected local and national officer of the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Sister Catherine Brown Mabels is a Zeta by Baker sorority, legacy of her mother, triumphant member Dorothy Morris Brown. And she is also the granddaughter of the late Dr. Leonard F. Morris Sr., a founding member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Catherine was inducted into Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Phi Gamma Chapter at Michigan State University on February 13, 1972. Catherine is a charter member of Theta Rho Zeta Chapter of Lansing. And now is a current chapter member of Zeta Tall Zeta in Chicago. Sister Catherine Brown Mabels is a crystal dove of our Nigerian sorority, meaning that she has over 50 years of dedicated service in Please help me welcome our sister of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Catherine Brown Mabels. And so I crafted this, and it's going to sound a lot like 
how it started and how it's going. My family story, my signal and greater connection. So I also would like to bring you from Chicago, my chapter, David Paul Data, the Metropolitan Chicago Graduate Chapter, the oldest graduate chapter in Illinois, founded by um, charter, I should say, by 57 young women. The fabulous 57 we call them. Four of them are still active in the chapter. And Upsilon Sigma Chapter of Phi Beta Sigma, Chicago Graduate Chapter, chartered in 1927. The mother chapter of the Great Lakes region. And I'm happy to say I live by four blocks in Sigma House, so I've been here quite a bit. Um, overseen by Brother Clarence Johnson, who I'm just very proud to say is one of my good friends now. Some of you probably know Brother Johnson. Yeah. He's a wonderful man. And whenever he sees me in the company of Sigma, he always grabs me and says, Do you know who she is? Do you know who she is? <laughs> <laughs> So, in, uh, first of all, talking about uh, my grandfather. So, growing up with my grandfather, it's an interesting story because my whole family, none of us ever really lived in the same place. We were always far flung all across the country and even across the world, which I explain a little later. Um, so, we, we met in you know, visits and conversations and stories, and my mother told me about and stories about my grandfather along the way, of course. Um, one of my aunts, we, my cousin and I were talking, and we talked to her and, and said, uh, you know, how would you describe you know, our grandfather? And she said, two words came to mind, determination and discipline. So as I go through this, you know, history, his history, some of which is known and some of which you may not have heard before from family stories, um, the, the, that theme, those themes, you know, just repeat and repeat and repeat. His drive, to learn and went on and on and on. He created a home library by dividing a bedroom into a, a second space that was filled to the wall with books. Not only filled to the walls, but the books on the floor stacked up. And I remember in Jacksonville, Florida, being in that room, actually, I don't know if I actually went in, because you could hardly get in the room. There was really no place to sit. There may have been one chair. But that was his space, and he was always, always surrounded by books everywhere. Um, I remember, uh, like I said, I remember seeing that. Um, I'm told he would sit there for hours and hours and hours, um, researching and reading. We know that he worked on, or actually wrote, probably um, two or three books on church administration, pastoral theology, and history of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. I just learned that one of my cousins had a collection of my grandfather's uh, Bibles with um, handwritten notes, some of my grandfather's notes in there that we think maybe my, my cousin's going to go through. We think there may be sermons in there. And he found one page that was listing students that uh, my grandfather was pursuing for um, scholarship uh, possibilities. So he was always, always you know, teaching and giving back in that regard. It's known that my grandfather was a student of the Greek language and that he gave the fraternity the name Phi Beta Sigma. He was also able to speak and understand three or four other languages, including Latin. And I actually watched him use that knowledge. He was, uh, my family was, was living in Washington, D.C., and my grandfather on several visits of the Christmas holidays would make sure he could see you know, the Pope gave the Christmas message from the Vatican in Latin. And somewhere there was always some broadcast that would actually present the Latin version without the English translation. And that's the one my grandfather always wanted to watch and listen to and follow along with. My mother told me the story years and years ago that at some point, I don't know what year this was or what time of his life this was, that my grandfather was, was fascinated by Catholicism and actually thought about joining the priesthood. I don't know where that was or when that was. You probably never heard that story, but I'm telling you, it came directly from his daughter, my mother. So, anyway, so that's that. That was the story. Um, 
My grandfather instilled in his love for learning with his children, his five children, and in turn has been passed down to his grandchildren, my generation, and their children, and yet another generation. My uh, brother's daughter is a student at Savannah College of Art. She's a very talented um, young artist. And uh, so, you know, she, she's bringing up the next generation. The legacy of education. Um, a lot of this you probably, you know, certainly signals itself from the history of this organization. You've seen and, and read a lot of this about uh, my grandfather. Um, his high school education in Bedford, Massachusetts. He was the valedictorian. Howard University, he graduated in three years with two degrees in Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Education. Um, the 1915 yearbook listed him as Director of Social Service, YMCA, President, Young Men's Progressive Club, Tutor of Languages and History, and, of course, Organizer and President of Phi Theta Sigma. From there, he went on, went on, went on, and on and on in on education. Payne School of Divinity, Bachelor of Divinity, Northwestern University, a master's degree. I found his thesis. It was over in Gainesville Church in uh, Alabama. Um, I got a book for you again. I found it in my law school book. Uh, College of Medicine in, in uh, Indianapolis, PhD of Metaphysics, and PhD of Psychology. Um, as I go through this, what, here's the thing that I, that I was talking about coming in here. But just, you know, he was fascinated. Look, look at, you know, I, I'm going to go through some more. You see, he was well traveled. My grandfather never had a driver's license, never drove, never owned a car. So while I was saying this, you know, picture this young black man doing all these things in the, in the 19 teens, teens, those teens, the 20s, the 30s, all over the country, now I'm going to list some other places. And just think about this as I go along. I, I don't really, I can't really grasp it all. And I knew him, I saw him, you know, I, so I, you know, I'm just looking at him. He really did all that, but he really did all this. Um, so the honorary degrees, Allen uh, University of South Carolina, honorary doctor of divinity, Edward Morris College, there was a history there, a doctor of law, dean of theology, and uh, president of of every Morris at one time, um, which I just read is the first HBCU in Florida. I had never seen that before, so I need to do some more research, but I take that as that is the case. Um, his work in education, now here's the part that fascinates me. Now look, look at all these places. Dover, Delaware, public school principal, Portsmouth, Virginia, Southern University of Louisiana, Alabama A&M, Payne University of Indiana, Bethel College, uh, or now University of Indiana, Mobile High School, Alabama, Bessington Academy in Florida, Edward Waters College, also in Florida, now at the University of Florida. Again, all of these, all those travels, you know, I don't know how to do that. At Edward Waters, he taught in the Department of History and Political Science, later became uh, Dean of Theology, and eventually uh, President of Edward Waters. There's a large monument on the campus of Edward Waters. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Jacksonville and seen it. Um, it's very impressive. It says in part, in memory of Leonard F. Morris, co-founder of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity, president of Edward Waters College. All my, my uh, Sigma Cousins of all, and my, my dads all had pictures of themselves. I think there's one of me somewhere um, standing next to this. Very nice. Along the way, um, not to leave, not to leave out, to leave her out, um, my grandfather met and married our grandmother, Gertrude Goldsmith, in Mobile, Alabama. And this is interesting because, I don't know if you've heard this story. So, remember the Mobile, Alabama place about where he worked? So, he was a high school principal in Mobile, Alabama. My grandmother was a student. <laughs> and it's not like I'm telling tales about the school because I was on ancestry and I called the marriage license and it clearly said Grandmother Morris was 17 and he was 35. There you go. <laughs> Children was born in Mobile. My mother was born in um, 
Florida, we have studies in the county in, in place. I don't know why I put birth certificates of studies in Florida. I may be aware of that, but we put it up. And they got your son, not for the data, but also for Alabama. So, moving on, the legacy of ministry. He was licensed in the AMU ministry in Providence, Rhode Island in 1917. From 1917, so think about that again. From, from Howard to Rhode Island, and I'm wondering if you know Jeff Howard went back up to Massachusetts and then somehow ended up in Rhode Island. I don't know, but I think that makes sense. Or Dave Deacon in 1920, or Dave Elder in 1922, and pastored in Mobile uh, in several churches in Florida. Then he goes to college in Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Tampa. St. Augustine, Jacksonville, Live Oak, and uh, Lake City. He moved around a lot. He, you know, he, you know, he had the inspiration, the, the dedication, the, the, you know, all of that. Um, he serves as, as a presiding elder in seven district, different districts in Florida at one time or another. Uh, during one of his visits to our family in Washington, D.C., my, uh, my grandfather actually baptized uh, my older brother and I in the United Presbyterian Church. Uh, that, that may actually be the only time I actually heard that he would preach, but that was really something special that I always hold very dear. So now, moving on, that's the how it started. So how it's going and how it's continuing. Legacy, the words of our elders remain the foundation from which all other things are built. So, how, how do we all get here? Well, you know, this is how, so we're standing, you know, other, other people came before us and here we are uh, carrying on. Um, again, my other grandparents had five children. Um, the oldest of the five, my Aunt Mary Helen, um, worked for many years as a microbiologist and wanted to become a pediatrician from childhood. And she actually achieved that. My aunt um, went to medical school, graduated, and became a doctor at the age of 50. She graduated and got that degree the same year I graduated from Michigan State. We, my family, went from Michigan State's commencement, drove to Ohio, and went to her graduation. I actually saw her and did that degree. Then she practiced. Um, I don't know if it was it was as big a um, uh, practice it was then as it is now in, in, in elder care. So she basically treated people her age and older until you know she couldn't uh, work anymore. So that's what she did. From, again, from childhood, my mother told me from the, you know when they were kids, my mom wanted to be a doctor, so she did achieve that again that inspiration, that dedication. The second child, uh, Leonard Jr. and their youngest. My uncle Decatur, uh, were both U.S. Army veterans. My uncle Leonard retired as a lieutenant colonel in the Army. My uncle Decatur retired as a colonel in the Army, and they were both single men. There's a picture that you may have seen of my grandfather pinning my uncle Leonard when he became a signal. It's, it's you know, part of his journal. I've seen him online um, a lot on the way back there. The third child of my, of my uncle, Fred, Frederick, um, became an ordained Baptist minister. Again, the inspiration and legacy. Um, and then my mother, my real mother, my real legacy mother. <laughs> um, when we were in Washington, she worked for a labor union. And then when we moved to New Jersey, she worked for um, several different community agencies working with people in the community. Um, and she eventually uh, went to Education Testing Service, which is the um, the organization that that you know that's um, part of the well SAT, the Scholastic Aptitude Test. She went there as a uh, as human resources. She trained um, the staff and what at the time was called sensitivity training. So she did. She went through all of that. My mother had ended when she. My mother actually was in college when she. Well, that was really so here's a story to tell you. My mother was in college when she met my father. So I was a, you know, a high school principal student then. <laughs> well, my parents were, my dad was, was, was a teacher at Southern University, and my mother was a student. 
he was a he was a teacher. My dad had my my dad, I know I have a friend, I have a friend named Douglas. My my father grew up in Boston and went to Harvard undergrad and in the in nineteen forty he graduated. So he went to and then he went to Howard and got his master's and then he went to Southern University to teach and met my mother. Um, so um, she um, didn't finish her 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 studies there, but later on, after he married and had two kids, my mother said, okay, well, let's go. And she ended up graduating from Howard. And that was, my mother pled Alpha Chapter at Howard was a grown woman with a husband and children. Yeah, dedicated, that's what she wanted to do. So my, my mother was Alpha Chapter. <laughs> and, and I was old enough to, to watch her go through that, and you know, she was showing me the baby. <laughs> so, you know, say I was born into this. I, I really was born into this. I mean, I don't know how I can explain it. Um, so, at any rate, so my mother didn't know that. But she ended up with that, that, that job as an education assistant. So, she was working on the program of uh, SAT um, for students with disabilities, making sure they had uh, proper testing accommodations. And I know she would come home and tell me stories of uh, her one on one conversations with students and parents to make sure they were all taken care of. And that was my mother. If my mother, if any young people came up to my mother's decision, anybody younger than her, it doesn't have to be my age, but anybody younger than her, they became my mother's children. We used, we had a joke about her that somebody picked up a little doll and called it the mama dot dot doll because everybody was, you know, gravitated to my mother. I shared her with Communities and neighborhoods everywhere we went, and you know, that's who she was. Um, now, moving on to the next generation, my generation, there are 10 grandchildren. I'll tell you about five, the five who are in, in our sisterhood and brotherhood. So, um, my cousin Charles, <laughs> this is a big one, he was uh, inducted and initiated in Gamma Delta Sigma Graduate Chapter in Orlando, Florida. He's still in Florida. He's a broadcaster just like me, and he's still sharing stories about that business. Um, today, at this time exactly, he is in Florida or has organized a, an event called Pastors Rocking the Mic, where pastors have brought their choir. It's a benefit concert for a program that my uh, cousin oversees every year, Youth Central Connection. Uh, annual What's My Anti-Drug Youth Summit. He's been doing this for many years. Um, he also does programs with uh, young fathers and other things. He has a podcast, and um, he's just always, always, always coming up with new things to help people in the community. My uh, cousin, uh, Zeta cousin, Helen, um, this is a great story. So she was inducted into Sigma Otis, Iota Zeta graduate chapter in Lindleysburg, Ohio, outside of Columbus. Um, when she she was inducted past Grand Bosmus, Mary Bright actually went went, and I was so jealous because the pics of her was past Grand Bosmus at her induction. Uh, Helen is a is a is an attorney. Um, uh, employment law. She, she's a workers advocate, not company, but workers. She works for us. Um, her younger brother Michael is a sigma. He went, uh, was inducted to Delta Omicron at Ohio State. He's a restaurant manager, so he uses his skills to you know, bring up you know, folks and teach them about that business. And um, my younger cousin Ward um, was uh, a piece of Atlanta. Phi Beta Sigma Sigma grad chapter. I don't think it's a grand chapter in Atlanta. So he's a human resources uh, person too. So you know, I just thought he's kind of doing something to say. On the other side of my family, on my father's side, I also have another cousin, so Regina. Um, she was inducted into Talk Data at the University of Virginia. She's a musician, songwriter, talented performer, and one of the smartest people I know. She went to school and majored in science, and some of the things I see her post on. Uh, on, on social media, just she's very, very smart. <laughs> so that's my generation. Um, so the experience and, and we talked about um, charter, the, the chartering that it does, the, the well-educated person. Um, again, so uh, five member chapter. Um, I was actually chapter bosses for two years and. Um, I was honored uh, uh, to do it 
Um, it came about partly because, um, as, as, I, as I pledged and went to uh, sorority life, um, a lot of the folks I pledged under graduated and many moved away. Some stayed in the area but were born into active um, in, the, in the chapter. So I kind of was like, wow, this would be a great opportunity. Our sponsoring chapter was a graduate chapter of the Zeta Omega Theta Pythagorean. So after I graduated and went to the university, saw the names of the people who were the charter members, and started talking and said, well, wouldn't it be nice if I had a you know, like local, you know, graduate chapter or something? And so we got together and got called Zeta Omega Zeta and everybody else in the fund and figured it out and lo and behold, Zeta Omega Zeta was born. So, you know, I, I don't know, I hate to say this, but my memory fails me. I, I saw somewhere that said I was a president, chapter president. I, I don't think you remember being the major. I guess I was. I think I was trying to hand it over to somebody else, but I think I might have been chapter president for a brief period of time. I don't know. But, uh, so I'm happy to see this uh, surviving. And as you saw before, I'm now uh, I am uh, now a member of uh, the Zeta Star Omega Chicago. Um, my my uh, cousin, I was talking about my um, my uh, my cousins and what they do. You heard some of what you know what I've done over the years. Um, including me being uh, uh, volunteer and I was a, I was a station shop school for many years, which was crazy. You know I. Participated in conduct negotiations and helped solve people's problems and things like that. Um, and uh, I'm still a mentor to not just young project stories, but, but some of the people I've known for older years. Um, as, as they've moved on and on and on, they still call me, want my advice, or you know, whatever. I, I, I recommend me for a job or something like that. Um, I'm now a volunteer at my church in Chicago um, on the media team. And um, yeah, so that's how much of a big now that I'm retired from broadcasting. So, Sigmas and Zetas, you know, uh, looking through you know, what, what we presented for, you see there's already a lot, so much going on. Um, this, this continuous legacy of service to our community. So, my pastor in Chicago, Bishop James C. Austin, Sr., Church of God in Christ in Chicago. Um, he's been teaching us uh, the late, at the end of last year and the beginning of this year about grace. Grace. Hebrews 4 and 16, come boldly unto the throne of grace. The grace of God, uh, as our bishop is teaching us, has four requirements. He, he says SSGG, salvation, service, giving, and growing. Bishop Austin, who, who was, a, I think, is a very good teacher, um, he can also be lighthearted and, and be enjoyed with, with sermons and with services. He loves to say to us from time to time, don't just sit in the comfort of your house. Sometimes you have to open up your windows and stick your big head out and see if you can help somebody. Like, but he, he repeats that from time to time just so to, to remind us what we're supposed to do, what we're here for, right? What we're here for, what we're supposed to do. Is stick, your, stick your big head out. Be zealous about good works, have the desire to serve. And um, Martin Luther King Jr., who we celebrated a few days ago, I think he wasn't here. Life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. So, inspiration. Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, scholarship, service, sisterhood, fighting womanhood, a community conscious action oriented organization. Our theme for this uh, our year, the extraordinary power of she, S H E, social health and economic justice. 
Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated in Culture for Service and Service for Humanity. I just listened to the uh, Founders Day presentation by uh, your president. Believing in the power of our vote, uh, now 2020 is election year. So, partners in action elevating the bond. Certainly, uh, this election year, and in addition to all the programs, I mean, there's all the programs that are involved with that, and there's so many, and, and committed and dedicated and, and um, successful uh, in all these programs. In an election year, um, there's so many things you can do. I was, I was for a long time a political producer in television. I thought it's a lot of life. What I try to do is make sure um, elected people and, and, and folks running for office have a, have a forum. Now, other than the, you know, the five sectors, the five, 10, 15 sectors you see in our newscast, actually long form programs, debates, and things like that. So, so many things, volunteering, uh, consulting, campaign um, information, had signing petitions, running for office, um, again, holding, here we go, holding your own for elected accountable, speaking truth to power. I always thought the same, you know, the election part was sometimes the easier part was to get other parties to make sure you get in office, making sure, you know, they're following what you, you wanted them to do, what you thought they were going to, what they said they were going to do. That becomes pretty interesting. Um, Dr. King, again, we need leaders not in love with money, but in love with service, I'm sorry, with justice, in love with justice. Not in love with publicity, but in love with humanity. So all those opportunities. So again, it's all about you know inspiration. And I know everybody here has people who've inspired them, family members. I don't think my family should be. You know, we have that one person in our family who just I don't know. I still don't quite understand how he did all that he did, but he did. Um, and, and it's nice to say, okay, look, I'm, I'm going to take pieces of that and try to drop it and bring it back to you all of us. But um, so it's really, we all have people like that around us family, friends, community leaders, whoever it is. That's our inspiration. So I just want to say in closing, here's something else I found on my social, my social media here. So I found my social media. Let me make sure I put this right. At the end of life, what really matters is not what we bought, but what we built. Not what we got, but what we shared. Not competence, but our character. And not our success, but our significance. Live a life that matters. Live a life of love. We are often reminded that the vision to create a beloved Zeta Phi Beta International Sisterhood came about in a conversation during a lover's stroll at Howard University. Brother Charles Taylor and Sister Eleanor Taylor. So at the center of our bonds, our blue and white family, sisters and brothers, is really the love, it's who we are, and it's what we can do.